Have you been applying for business credit in the wrong order? No lie, this could cost you tens and thousands of dollars in funding for your business. The reason you end up losing out on money is because you might apply for some things that will limit what you're able to apply for later. So if you're just applying at the first place you see or based off what you've heard, or even just because you have a relationship with that bank, it could still be hindering the amount of money you ultimately get for your business. So I'm gonna give you the proper way to look at things in regards to how you want to structure the sequence in which you start applying to ultimately improve the amount of money you're able to get at the end of the process. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that you locate all of the best banks that you can go to in your area. One of the best ways to do that is by Googling bank branch locator, and it will be able to show you all of the banks within your state, within your city. And then you can get an idea of where are some of the best places that you have available to you to go to. Now, let's say we want to check out all of the banks in Texas, right? So we're going to go right here to the state map because this is the easiest way to do this. Go ahead and click Texas. Let's just go ahead and say we want to see what they have available there automatically takes you to all of the banks in texas but let's take a look at the larger banks because that's where we're going to get the most money and that's the ones that you're more likely to run across so we can see here some of the biggest banks that they have are chase wells fargo bank of america pnc we got regions truest so you can see that there are you know a lot of other options but these are some of the more common and some of the best options because we especially want those that don't require documentation for the application as far as proof of income now, one thing to consider here is you definitely want to make sure that you have enough credit limits reporting in the personal side, because the more money you have showing in personal credit limits, the more money you can get on the business side. So if you didn't know that, it's a great time to start working on that now, because I would say you want to have about 30K or better in personal credit limits before you start applying for the business funding. And if you did know that and you were already about to start applying for some things or maybe you already have applied for some things, this is where the rules that I'm about to explain to you are going to make things easier for you later. Because, again, if you do this in the wrong order, you can end up not being able to get enough personal credit limit showing to increase what you get on the business side. And then based off what you applied for, you could end up not having the opportunity to get some of the business cards that you need to. OK, now some of you might have already heard this first bank card rule that I'm about to talk about, but you probably haven't heard of the other ones we're going to talk about. But it's important that I cover this first bank rule anyway, because we all know that Chase gives out the highest limits in regards to business credit cards. For example, another client just the other week just got another 75K business credit card. So because of that, if Chase is a big bank in your city, you wanna make sure that you are following their rules because they have some of the strictest and you wanna make sure that you can get something with Chase later. So let's take a look at their card rule, which is the 524 rule, which a lot of you guys, as I mentioned, are already familiar with. And with this rule, if you've already been approved for five credit cards in the last 24 months, then you will be denied. Now, this isn't about inquiries on the credit report. This is about you had five credit cards that you got approved for and they're open on your personal credit report. So, yes, the business cards don't count towards this because they don't show up on your personal credit report unless you apply for Capital One, which is another reason why I tell people stay away from going to the Capital One card because it can mess you up later. So with this, there are, you know, two really good business cards that chase arguably the two best business credit cards that are out there because of the points and rewards that you get with those particular cards. So ideally, you would want to only have had three credit cards approved before you get to the point of going to Chase. So that means if you're a person with absolutely no credit card showing up on the personal side, you have to be really strategic about whatever three cards you apply for because you would need to be shooting for getting at least 10K on each of those three cards to get 30k showing on your personal credit report to help you get more money on the business side so this is a very important rule to keep in mind and then of course you have to look at your personal credit reports to see where you're at and what you have and how long ago if you already have credit cards you might have applied for and gotten approved for those cards and hopefully they're outside of the last two years so that they won't count against this rule OK, now next, let's take a look at Bank of America. What is their rule? They have something called two, three, four. So with that, you can get two cards in 30 days. So if you apply for two cards, you know, same day over two days, just within the last 30 days, 
you won't see any issues in getting approved for that unless something else, you know, came up with your credit or your income or something like that. Now, you can also get three cards within a 12 month period. So that means to get this third card, you would have to wait outside of that first 30 days to apply for a third card. And then you wouldn't be able to apply for a fourth card until after that 12 months has passed. And at that point, you know, it takes 24 months before you're able to get any more cards outside of that, just based off of how the rules are set up at Bank of America. So with that being said, you know, if you have a relationship with Bank of America, you know, you need to get two cards on the personal side in order to get ready for your business funding. Then you want to make sure that, you know, you can go to Bank of America because you already have a relationship with them and you can get two cards within 30 days. Now, let's take a look at Wells Fargo, which is a little bit more interesting because they don't really have a set thing. But based off of some data points, basically, it is possible to be denied if you try to get a second card from them within a six month period. Now, what makes this interesting, though, is that they don't count the built card. So that is the card where you actually get points for paying rent. So they don't apply that card to this limitation and also the signified business credit card, which is their only business credit card at the time of this recording. So those two things won't count against you in regards to any denials. So basically what I've done with this is I had a client who already had a relationship with Wells Fargo and had absolutely no personal business credit at all. At the end, within the rather short time frame, within 30 days, we got him up to 30,000. And part of that came from him getting one of the journey cards from Wells Fargo on the personal side. Then we went for the built card. He was able to get approved for both of those within that time frame because it did not hit any of the restrictions of these limits. And he really got 22,000 from those two cards alone. Now, before we continue on, I want you guys, if you are enjoying this video so far, to go ahead and give it a thumbs up so you too can know this is a good video to show to more people. And subscribe to the channel if you want to continue to get more great information like this. And also, because I know some of you guys might have tried to apply for these cards before, maybe you got denied and didn't really know why. If it sounds like you were in some of these scenarios where you applied for a card with the same bank within these limitations and got denied, if it seems like based off of what you're hearing now, that's what might have happened. Could you go ahead and leave a comment down in the description? Or if you've been approved despite these rules that I'm mentioning and you've seen the opposite of what I'm saying, put that down in the comments too. It's not uncommon for banks to change their rules on a regular basis. So you might be providing some new data points that helps everybody. Okay, so the next card rules we're gonna look at is gonna be Amex. Now with them, the rules are very simple too, but there's one thing that you need to pay attention to. So you can apply for one credit card every five days and you can apply for two credit cards every 90 days. Now, these limits apply to personal cards and business cards. And the distinction that I want you to catch here is that I said credit cards and not charge cards. Now, the credit cards are any of the cards where you have a revolving limit that you can use and pay off and carry a balance. As you know, with the charge cards, you're supposed to pay those off at the end of the month, even though some of them now do have options where you can carry a balance too. They're still considered charge cards and not credit cards. And the total number of credit cards that you can have with Amex is five. So not only do they limit how often you can apply for them, you can also only have a total of five. Again, between personal and business cards combined. And if you aren't familiar, the charge cards are gonna be the platinum cards and the gold cards. The revolving cards are going to be more so the blue card. One thing to note here, too, is that once you already have one card with Amex, every card that you get after that is pretty much going to be a soft pull. So it won't add an inquiry, which can also cause some denials when you're trying to get approved for funding. That is having too many inquiries within a recent time frame. So having a relationship with Amex can be really beneficial because you can get some cards reporting with a soft pull. Keeping in mind that they do like to give out lower limits for those that don't already have established relationships with them, even if you have rather high income. Now, there are a few more things that you want to consider before you get started in applying. But before I get into that, I want to let you guys know if you guys need help as far as getting somebody to look at your personal credit, what it is that you need in place to be in a better position to get the most funding that you can get and the sequence that you need to follow to do so so that you're just not trying to figure out all of this stuff on your own. You can book a free funding strategy session with me down below in the description. I'll get some information from you. So I have everything that I need to best help and guide you. And we can see if we can work together on getting you anywhere from 50 to 200 K for your business at 0% interest. And the biggest difference I see with people that go down the funding process without having the right help and the right steps is they usually end up getting 60% less money 
for their business versus working with somebody that already has experience in this. And look, I used to be a business banker. I used to work for one of the top three banks in the U.S. I took the applications on the personal side and the business side. I saw what they look at. I know what goes into the system. And that's just experience that most people don't have. So again, if you want to make all of this easier and accelerate getting the money that you need to get the inventory that you need to pay for that marketing that you need to grow your business or to hire the help you need to get the equipment that you need to grow and scale your business much faster than using your own money out of pocket, then set a call with me below. But now some other things that you want to consider are you also have to know what banks check what credit bureaus because if you have a certain number of inquiries on a certain credit bureau and that's the bureau that the bank that you're about to go to next is going to check you need to know that because it might be more beneficial to go to a different bank that does not check that credit bureau and go to them first before you start applying at a bank that's going to check a credit bureau where you have more inquiries or maybe there are some soft pull banks out there that you can apply for funding to get and applying for those soft pulls first before getting any inquiries will allow you to get some funds that you need before going to the banks that are going to add inquiries. There are also some banks that have preset minimal credit limits on certain credit cards. And if you know what those cards are, you can apply for those and know that you're going to have enough money reporting on the personal side before you even get to the business side. And that way you can limit the amount of inquiries or cards that you have showing up to get to the dollar amount that you need. And now you don't mess yourself up on that 524 rule at Chase. So the best way to go about actually getting this done and making sure you're set to go to the funding stage with your business is to make sure you take a look at your personal credit report. Look at all of the credit cards you have reporting that are open. You want to see when those open dates are to see what time frame they were opened in so that you know how many cards you have left that you can get before you get to the Chase side of things. Then go back and play back these credit card limitations on applications within these certain time frames so you can know, OK, I have a relationship with this bank so I can go ahead and I can apply and get this number of cards within this time frame. I can get some funding in that way and then I can get my credit limits up in that way before applying for the real business funding I'm trying to get. You know, you have to be strategic in outlining this just to make sure that you can maximize the amount of cards you still have available to you to get on the back end. Because again, with Amex, if you get too many of those credit cards on a personal end, you'll be limited on how many you can get on the business side. Because don't get me wrong, those charge cards they have at Amex are great, but you also don't want to have that requirement all the time that you have to pay it off at the end of the month. It's great to have those cards that they have that allow you to carry a balance so you can take advantage of that 0% interest and not to have to pay off large amounts of money, especially if you're in the beginning stages of your business and still trying to get things up and running. And since now you have a better idea of how to look at a sequence as far as how to start accumulating credit cards and when to put in these applications, you need to know what to put in on the application to make it flawless so that you can get that approval and get the money that you need on the business side. I'm going to show you how to do that in this next video right here but if you're still trying to figure out your business structure and you haven't fully filed your business yet i'm going to see you right here to learn which entity types are the best type for approval and i'll see you in the next video